Hey everyone, it's Mike, aka Michael Octopus, and welcome to episode 1 of Let's Draw, where I walk you through an entire character illustration in real time. Along the way I'll be discussing processes, some tips, tricks, and random babblings of the subject matter. Today we're drawing none other than Goku of Dragon Ball Z fame. Alright, enough with the introductions, let's draw! Alrighty, let's get started. I usually like to start with the head when doing character illustrations. I'll usually just start with a basic circle and kind of mark where I need the chin to go. Um, and then the next step is I'll usually do the action line. Um, the action line is a good base from which you can build the rest of your character upon. It helps you determine the pose and it just lays a good foundation for the entire character. I like the circle anatomy method. Um, the circular anatomy method is a technique that I will go into more detail on a different video in the future, um, but it's a very simple, very basic technique for plotting out your anatomy, and it's one that I like to employ uh, on pretty much any character illustration that I do. Along with circles, I'll usually use some quick lines, some gestural lines to kind of figure out where I need certain limbs to go, uh, the placement of certain limbs, and it helps me determine the pose of the character. In this phase, it's very rough and very loose. Um, I'm, not, I'm not too concerned with details at this point, such as muscles or, or anything like that. I'm just getting down the basic shape of the character. And then I'll kind of go back in a little bit and start to define the shape a little bit, but still nothing too detailed at the moment. Now I'll kind of go in and figure out where I want the shoulders to lay. The elbows will usually reside at the base of the rib cage. You can usually line them up there and the wrists will usually align where the legs meet the pelvis. So then once you have those two locations marked, you can go back in and fill in the areas in between. Again, just using simple circles of different shapes and lengths to block out the character's anatomy. Don't worry about getting too detailed at this point, you just want to get the basic shape right. Now I'll go back in and fix up the neck a little bit. And now going back to the original circle, that's going to essentially be the brain of the head, the skull area. And using the base of that circle, you can determine where the eyes will be. You can draw a line down the center of the face and that will help be a guide for your facial features. Go in and add some neck details. Start to block out some of the muscular structure at this point, getting a little more detailed, but still nothing too significant at the moment. Drawing a line down the center of the body can help you map out where all your muscles line up, such as your pecs and the abs, and how they connect and relate to the body in the pose that it's in. Just add a few more facial details, starting to get a little more detailed now. Add 
got some ears. Something I've always noticed about Dragon Ball Z characters is they all have really big ears. I don't know if that's a conscious choice or just a stylistic thing that a Kira Toriyama has, but uh, I know that Dragon Ball Z is based off of Journey to the West or the Monkey King, and you know, monkeys have big ears, so maybe there's something to that. When I originally planned on drawing this, I was going to do Super Saiyan Goku. That's why he's got a little bit more of a stern look on his face. Halfway through, I just went with regular Goku. I might save Super Saiyan for another video. But uh, for this video, he's just going to be a serious base level Goku. Now I can go in and start adding some of the clothing details, blocking out where and how the folds apply to the structure of the character. A good rule of thumb for clothing when it comes to wrinkles and stuff is um, areas that bend on your body such as elbows or knees or armpits or waist you usually have some pinches in the in the fabric so when it came time to decide which character I was going to do for the first video it was pretty much a no-brainer to do Goku um, ever since I was in high school from the early 2000s, I'd say about 1999 to 2003 is when I graduated, I would watch Dragon Ball Z pretty much every single day. It was, it was my ritual after school, um, and I would just love drawing these characters. And it, it was really my first huge inspiration, and the art of Akira Toriyama still influences my artwork today. Um, even though I don't draw exactly like his manga style, um, you can definitely see influences within my work at times. And uh, every once in a while, you know, I just have to go and draw something that is in the Akira Toriyama style just for fun, just to kind of keep myself grounded in that style. But I can remember the very first uh, thing I ever saw for Dragon Ball Z, they played the uh, movie I think it was Tree of Might on uh, Toonami, and I was just blown away. At that point, one of the only other animes that I'd ever seen, uh, I saw Akira. Uh, it, it was kind of being passed around at my at my high school on VHS, and that was that was my first true introduction into anime, unless you count uh, uh, some people count stuff like Thundercats. You know, back in the 80s, their intro animation uh, was done over in Japan, and a lot of the animation for the show was actually done overseas. And so, technically, you can consider that anime, but um, I consider, you know, Akira and Dragon Ball Z to be like the true anime, uh, at least my true anime introduction. But yeah, seeing Tree of Might for the first time just blew me away. The animation was so amazing. Um, the, the powers that the characters had, the unlimited strength that Goku had was just amazing. Uh, the power-ups, I was just enthralled. And from there, the, the series started, and I, I can remember it would only go up through about the Namek Saga, and... Dragon Ball Z was becoming like a, a thing over in America where in like specialty shops or like video game stores you would walk in and you could see posters and because the series wasn't very far over here yet you were seeing characters like Majin Buu or even Future Trunks and 
you didn't really necessarily know who these characters were. I think everybody probably knew who Future Trunks was because he was such a popular character. I knew who he was well before his story arc ever aired over in America, and I hadn't even seen any of the uh, any of the episodes. Um, you know, whether bootleg or borrowing them from people who have gotten them off the internet. Um, I hadn't seen anything of Future Trunks, but I still knew who he was. But characters like Majin Buu, I had no idea who he was. Um, Super Saiyan 3 Goku, I remember seeing a picture of him on a poster that I actually had hanging in my room at one point. And I honestly, I had no idea who he was. I thought he was like Super Saiyan Raditz or something. Uh, but I, I had no idea what the concept of Super Saiyan 3 was. I have to say my favorite saga of Dragon Ball Z would be uh, the Frieza saga. Frieza is my, actually my all-time favorite character from Dragon Ball Z. That final form of his where he's all white with like the purple head and uh, purple shoulders. That was just amazing to me. That character design, it was so simple so clean but he was so powerful whereas the transformations before that one were so monstrous and he wasn't as powerful but he was so much bigger and so much more scary looking i actually read somewhere that the design for final form frieza was actually what akira toriyama considered to be um i can't remember exactly what he said but it was something like uh uh, he considered that what what you know true evil looks like or his, something he saw in his nightmares at one time If I had to choose one of my favorite movies of the Dragon Ball Z um, collection, ah, man, I'd have to say it's probably any of the cooler movies. Actually, no, not any of the cooler movies, just the first cooler movie. Uh, I definitely don't like Cooler's uh, Revenge or The Return of Cooler. The Return of Cooler is the one I don't like, where he's like a cyborg. Cooler's Revenge, such weird titles, like... Cooler's revenge. He's getting revenge for Frieza, I guess, because it's the first time you're seeing him, so I don't really know why he's getting revenge, but I guess he is avenging his brother, who he doesn't really seem to care too much about. So it's just a weird title, but Return of Cooler is the, the movie that I don't necessarily like. But uh, again, Frieza being my favorite character, of course I'm going to like anything that has to do with his... Uh, characters that are like him and Cooler was kind of like a, well, cooler version of Frieza. But uh, I, I remember watching it and, and back in the earlier days when they were releasing those like on VHS, uh, the soundtrack included bands like Deftones and so you'd have these hard rock uh songs that you know I grew up with playing behind Goku transforming into a Super Saiyan and I mean that was just that was just awesome Now we can go in and kind of start inking the illustration. Typically I like to use brush pens, but uh, the one that I was using right now uh, was running out of ink. So right now I'm using a Copic multi-liner pen. They're really nice pens for just basic straight lines. You get a very consistent line with this one. This one, my ink again is kind of running out, so you may see some breaks in the line on this one but I really enjoy working this one but later on I'll probably go back over with a brush pen to get a few more bolder details in my inks. One thing I really loved about the Dragon Ball Z anime was it was very... Uh, the art style 
represented the comic book style very closely. It was almost, see, I actually, yeah, I watched the anime before I ever read or even saw the, the manga. I would see some, like, single shot comic books in the comic book store just randomly. Um, but one thing I always enjoyed seeing in those comic books was that it was as if they were taking panels right out of the comic book and animating them into the anime. The art style was so dead on. It was just insane. And uh, I can remember um, at a certain point in one of the sagas, I think it was, it had to have been the Frieza saga, I was actually following along in the manga as I was watching the episode. It was that close to the comic book. Typically when I ink, I add a lot more detail than when I sketch. I don't usually, when I'm, when I'm sketching in pencil, I'm, I don't usually add every single detail that I'm going to ink over. I should draw more details with the pencil during the pencil phase, but uh, because sometimes it gets me into some precarious situations where I'm inking and I'm coming up to some to an area and I don't exactly know what I need to be inking in this area but also it forces me to make confident decisions about my line work and uh, and the direction that I'm going for the, for the character If I had to choose a second favorite character of Dragon Ball Z, it'd probably be Dodoria, which is a really weird one, but again, I just love that na whole Namek Saga, whole Namek Saga, Frieza Saga combination, and Dodoria was one of those characters who had a character design that was just really fun, real interesting, and uh, he had some really well animated episodes that I just loved watching. I also really liked Raccoon and Nappa. They kind of were like the same character to me. I just loved how massive they were. Um, again, they had some really fun animated uh, episodes as well. As you can see, I try not to be too sketchy with the pen. I try and make single strokes. Just be very confident with those brush strokes. Add a couple of Goku stray hairs there. Now keep in mind that a lot of the characters that we're going to draw in these Let's Draw series are cartoon characters, so, so you don't necessarily have to get too bogged down in realistic details of these characters. Um, animation is inherently a simplified version of reality. So like I said, I, I really love Dragon Ball Z. That was my first introduction into anime. Um, and it was my first introduction into the Dragon Ball world. I've actually not watched all of Dragon Ball. Um, I've watched all of GT, which I didn't really care for, especially looking back on it. I don't think, I, I just can't ever see myself ever wanting to ever watch it again. There were some well animated parts of it, but it wasn't really enough to hold my interest necessarily. Um, however, I am watching Super right now, and I'm absolutely loving where it's going. Uh, I think they're really paying attention to storytelling in this one, and it's it's probably one of the best 
story lines I've ever seen in a Dragon Ball Z series. There's a lot of twists and turns and a lot of mystery and it's, it's just really great. I love what they're doing. I hope it keeps going on for a long time. As you've probably noticed over on the left side of my screen, I've put up a super that lets you see what tools I've been using throughout this video. I'm just drawing on regular computer paper. Uh, back when I was younger, instead of buying expensive sketchbooks, my parents would just buy me big reams of computer paper and you know that's what I've drawn on my entire life and it works just fine I'm not saying it's just as good as a moleskin sketchbook but uh, for but for now it, it, it works just fine just add some more details some more wrinkles in his pants and some details on his boots. He's got some simplistic design on the top of his boots. Now for the facial features. Again, like I said, when I first started drawing this, I was intending to draw Super Saiyan Goku, and Super Saiyan Goku usually has a very serious look on his face. But at the halfway point, I, I decided to go with base Goku. Um, but I'd already drawn his facial features, so I just decided to draw serious Goku. And now we erase our pencils and we will be left with some very clean inks. Now I'm going back in with my brush pen like I mentioned earlier and I'm going to be filling in all the black areas with this brush pen. And I'm going to speed this up just a little bit while I fill in all the blacks. So I mentioned that I really like the Dragon Ball Z anime, but uh, uh, ever since, but as of recently, I have been collecting all of the um, Viz Jumbo uh, manga collections, and uh, I just completed my collection, and so now I have all of the all of the manga complete, and I've been reading through that, um, but. On top of that, I've also been buying the uh, colored versions of the manga as they've been coming out over here in America, um, and that's just that's really fun to look through because they uh, a lot of the frames actually look like the way it was colored in the in the anime, uh, so it, it's basically like seeing a comic book version of the anime. One thing I really love about Akira Toriyama's style is how he mixes cartoony with uh, comic book style. I mean, he, he has these very serious characters that uh, can be used in, um, you know, very dramatic, very tense moments, and they look very serious and very threatening, but at the same time, uh, he can also draw them in ways that's very comedic.
I love how Akira Toriyama's uh, worlds usually will mix fantasy and reality. Like, you, it's not uncommon to see dinosaurs walking around, or um, heck, the ruler of the free of, of the world is a cat. I think he's, I think he is, but he's just an anthropomorphic animal. So, I mean, you've got these serious human characters, and uh, Goku himself is an alien, so. I actually really liked Goku's voice in uh, the original dub that they aired on Toonami. I believe it was done by a, a company called Ocean or Blue Ocean something. Like they just called they shortened it to Ocean Dub on, on the internet. But um, uh, there's just some the, the voice actor who did it was got really into some of the scenes that he was doing. He did really well and I really liked some of the ways that he would portray Goku um, but I actually don't really like a lot of the voices used in uh, Dragon Ball Z Kai and now the uh, English dub of Dragon Ball Super. Chris Ayers is the voice of uh, Frieza and he does a fine job but he's just not the Frieza that I grew up with. Uh, you know I, I like my Frieza to sound like a haggerty old woman but um i think had it been chris Ayers from the beginning uh you know i wouldn't mind it so much he because he does a fine job he, he gets pretty intense and uh, he can emote pretty well and he kind of gives this uh gives frieza the the overconfidence and, and that he needs in his personality and he does that pretty well but uh, i i definitely like the original funimation voice actor for Frieza. Alright, we have finished the inks on this one. Real quickly, I'm going to lay down some uh, gray tones using my Copic markers. Copic? Copic? I call them Copic, but I've heard people call them Copic. I've heard more people say Copic than I have Copic, but I'll always call them Copic. Um, I'm using three different shades of gray. Um, I'm using my lightest color of gray for skin tones, my mid-tone for his orange ghee. And then I'll use my darkest gray for the areas that are blue. Dragon Ball Z was actually one of the first mangas that I was ever interested in, introduced to as well. And uh, it was the first time I'd ever seen a black and white comic book before. And uh, at the time I first saw it, I just thought maybe it was because, you know, maybe he was lazy and he just didn't want to color it. Um, but when I got older and I realized how quickly they have to turn around some of these mangas, I was like, well, obviously there's no way they could spend the time to color all of these panels and still get these things out on time. <clears throat>
go in and add some finishing touches and looks like we are done that is it we have done it we've drawn Goku all right everyone thanks for tuning in this has been episode one of let's draw where we drew Goku of Dragon Ball Z thank you for watching and please be sure to subscribe and leave a comment telling me what you liked or maybe didn't like about this video and I'll definitely keep refining these and making them better for the future and maybe tell me what you'd like to see drawn on a future episode until then this is Michael Octopus signing off keep drawing guys